something else that has gained a lot. I call it a singular thing, and that is the Magnificent Seven, because they've been known as a group. I mean, how about NVIDIA, 45%, or Meta, 32%. Uh, let's talk about this group and the likelihood of them beating again in 2024. Jeffrey Smalls with us, President of Arbor Financial. Thank you so much. Um, we still calling them Magnificent Seven? Do you, I mean, do you like the entire group for 2024? Because I know they fluctuate. Well, there's a there's a new name going around, Nicole, the Magnificent Six. Of course, that's excluding Tesla, since Tesla's metrics are starting to look more like an, a traditional automotive company, like a GM or Ford. But I still am very long on Tesla too. But the Magnificent Six or Seven, either way you like it, when things are growing at double digits, when revenues are blowing out and free cash flow is dramatically expanding and EBITDA is expanding and gross revenues are expanding, those are the things you want to own at the top of an interest rate cycle before the Fed officially goes dovish, because those things are going to dramatically appreciate. All of their category of, of metrics and finances will improve once rates beginning to drop, and they will drop probably in about six to seven months, but I think we're looking at mid-year before that happens. But yes, when those things are growing and the rest of the market is not, this isn't rocket science. I mean, the, all the pundits missed it. You know, we've been we've been clamoring about these things, trying to change the financial culture and get the interest. And now we have massive reset in prices upwards on, you know, three or four of these great magnificent seven stocks at this time. You know what's interesting? There was a time where we used to say fang, right? And um, and then people would come on and say, look, I like everything except Netflix um, in that fang group. And then what happened, right? Netflix turned around and soared. Um, it, it did incredibly well. One year, it's up 55%, basically. Um, so, you know, if you take out the names that are negative so far this year, that would be Apple and Tesla. Um, you know, thoughts on, you mentioned you do like Tesla. What about Apple? Well, you know, I, I do like Apple um, with 250 million iPhone users looking to re get new phones once the suite of AI apps comes out in 2025. <clears throat> I think Apple will be back in a growth mode, um, but for now they're kind of flat, um, but that's typical based on their market share and where they are with their product line. Um, but we do see things improving at, you know, in 2025. I don't expect Apple to be really a stellar star this year, um, I see maybe 10, 15 percent growth on the stock for the year as as the magnificent six or seven are chased due to the you know expansion of of uh, of their bottom line and their top line numbers. And so I think Apple is still a good AI play to own in the group. So when you say 10, 15 percent growth um, and you think about the stock price, are you, are you comfortable to say that a majority of these names will likely be up at least 10 percent this year, with the exception of Tesla? Um. I think Tesla will be at more than 10% before the end of the year as well. But, you know, look, in an election year, when an incumbent runs, the average return is 11.5%. That's the S&P's benchmark right now. That's what it's trying to produce this year. And so will those magnificent six or seven stocks uh, as a unit exceed that rate of return? Absolutely. They're, they're already doing it. Um, you know, Google and Apple right. are kind of flat. Tesla's in the red. Tesla's been in the red since November of 2020. The stock has been in decline because it was overvalued. And so now it's coming back down to earth. And so they just need some good news as a catalyst to, hit, you know, that thing will, hit, will ramp back up again. Um, but the other core stocks, Amazon, Meta, um, Microsoft, you know, those things are just smoking right now. And so Amazon's probably the best yeah. player in the group right now to own, Nicole. I think that's got the most upside potential and really hasn't experienced the true price reset that a lot of the other stocks have seen in this group. Why is that, do you think? Why did people forget about Amazon? As we saw so many ads for uh, Temu, I was calling it Timu, but it's Temu yesterday. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's a Chinese competitor in China. I don't think that's gonna affect Amazon here. Um, but they have, a, they have a collection of very impressive businesses worth more than the sum of its parts um, due to a very impressive flywheel. You know, when you look at their online store sales, those were up 8% last quarter. Um, their physical store sales up four, third-party services up 19%, advertising up 26%, subscriptions up 13%, AWS up 13.1%. But the, the real hidden gem in Amazon is the fact that in 12 months, Nicole, they went from negative $20 billion in free cash flow to $32 billion in positive free cash flow. That's a negative number swing of over $50 billion. And so they can turn on the free cash flow very quickly to do things to improve their business and do things like stock buybacks. And I think that's 
Amazon is really in a great position right now, especially when they start to refocus on their net profits, which I think they've really, they've done a great job of focusing on that. And I think it's going to get better from here. Yeah, and what about the rest of the tech names? I mean, you have um, the semiconductors, you know, we talk about NVIDIA, but that whole group has, has uh, potential, right? Or at least that's what some of the analysts say. I certainly don't want to make any assumptions myself. I mean, when you look at tech, do you have certain tech names that you do like other than the Magnificent Seven? Um, I do. I like Plantier a lot. Um, you know, just recently had a nice move, yeah. about 50% here in the last couple of weeks. And so we're going to start to see some of the peripheral AI names accelerate. And, uh, you know, it's kind of the luck of the draw on trying to figure out who's going to be the winner here. But I think that's one that stands to benefit, even when they had huge insider selling. Um, and their 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 quarterly report wasn't absolutely stellar, but it wasn't bad either. And so, you know, that company's wrapping up. Um, I think there's lots of companies out there in about 20, a group of about 20 out there right now that I think could could be in that flywheel of AI growth stocks. Um, but, you know, it's 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 difficult to figure out which ones those are, even for us, Nicole. Yeah, understood, understood. Um, and look, you know, people used to use price to earnings ratio. I mean, or they look at cash flow. Uh, I'm not sure that things are the same when you try and understand some of these companies. Um, what kind of things do you look at? Well, you know, of course you look to see what the multiple is on the stock, what the stock price to earnings ratio is, and is it overbought and can future value, uh, you know, improve that, that ratio. And um, I think right now today for things like Meta and Amazon and Microsoft, um, those stocks probably their multiples aren't representative of what their true PE is, even though Amazon, even though um, Meta and Microsoft have hit all time, Meta and Microsoft have hit all time highs. And so I think the only one that really hasn't been reset yet is Amazon. Um, and so I think the sky is the limit yeah. for these stocks as long as they keep growing. All right. Good to see you, Jeffrey Small. Thank you so much, Barbara Financial.